Historian. Howdy, y'all. Steve, the Amateur Historian. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite bands. Uh, probably a lot of people would concur with me that this is one of their favorite bands. I'm talking about the Eagles. And specifically, I'm mentioning their second album, which was Desperado, of which their famous song of that same name appeared on. And it was their second album, I want to say released in 1972. It might have been 71, but I think that's when their first album came out. I might be off by a year on that. But their second album, Desperado, was very Western themed. Um, and even the main... Um, or I think it was on the back of their album cover, it depicted the band members dressed as outlaws, which the front uh, cover of the album shows the same thing, of them dressed up, you know, like Westerners, one of them's got a gun. And, um, but I guess the back cover shows them um, in a way replicating the aftermath of a shootout that happened in a very small town called Coffeyville, Kansas. Um, this is back in 1892, so, you know, pretty much every town west of the Mississippi or heck, even west of the Appalachians was small, if non-existent, at that time. And they were, in many ways, replicating uh, from the shootout multiple gang members who rode into town and were gunned down by the locals who lived in that small town. It was a very famous, very iconic gang known as the Dalton Gang. And there's even a song on the Eagles album that's called Doolin Dalton. And that is because there was a guy, I believe his name was, um, I think it was Bill Dalton and Bill Doolin. I think they both were named Bill, who knew each other. Um, Doolin was considered a member of the Dalton Gang, and then after this shootout wherein most of the members of the Dalton Gang were killed, one of the remaining Daltons, who I believe was Bill, ended up joining um, the Doolin Gang with this Doolin guy, so they crossed over, which is... And the song, Doolin Dalton, actually predominantly focuses on the experience of the Dalton Gang. Now, the Daltons were actually originally um, tried being involved in law enforcement. They were law enforcement officers. They were pursuing um, justice, I guess as you could say. And one of their uh, members, uh, one of their family members, I can't, again, you know, I, the, the history is still a little, a little sketchy to me. I'm actually very interested in looking into it more and getting to know it very well for reasons I'll express in a moment. But one of their family members, I believe in 1888, was gunned down in the line of duty. And not so long after that, one of the members of the Dalton family got busted for, uh, I want to say it was like an illegal liquor, liquor operation or something related to illegal alcohol. And as time rolled, it seemed almost like these, and they were called the Dalton Gang because I believe three members of the gang, there was more members, but three of them were brothers by the name of Dalton, so they were uh, a huge chunk of that gang, and they started feeling kind of, um, I guess you could say misled by law enforcement. Here they were trying to do what was right. One of their family members uh, fell dead in the line of duty, which, I mean, unfortunately happens, and they seem to have tried taking their shot at it, and then ultimately they ended up going the complete opposite way, and they became outlaws. And I believe their first official uh, act as outlaws happened in 1890, and by 1892 they were dead and gone. But even in that two-year span that they were active, they became infamous. Um, they've been kind of lost um, under the guise of, you know, Jesse James, Billy the Kid, Butch Cassidy, and the Sundance Kid, and all these people that have been made more famous by history, by media, by film, especially if you're going to be talking about, like, Butch Cassidy, and, I mean, I guess Billy the Kid with, like, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but, um, the Dalton Gang are iconic. Uh, they were some of the most ruthless, 
uh, gang members out there. They've just been kind of a little bit buried under those slightly more uh, well-known iconic ones, but they were still well known and they were feared and they they uh, I mean uh, The amount of I mean they pretty much just killed you and took your stuff and went Went to the next town knocked them over they'd knock over a train knock over a bank Whatever you know, whatever the opportunity was they would take full advantage of that and They were actually planning on they wanted to do some big heist um, even though I don't, I'm not even sure heist was existed back then, but they wanted to do something big. The law was cracking down on them, and they wanted to get a big score so they could kind of disappear and lay low for a while uh, until they could, you know, shed the heat or until the heat uh, started loosening up against them. And they were they were always kind of known as being brazen. And I mean, why why shouldn't they be? Every every you know act they took, every, you know, bank they knocked over, every venture they went on to try to steal some good money they were successful in. And they hatched this scheme, and it seems like a lot of it was for show, but it was also intended to get a big score. They planned on, they'd rolled into this Coffeeville, small Coffeeville, Kansas town, and they had a plan of robbing two banks at the same time. Literally, two banks that were across the street from each other, they were going to rob both of them practically all at once. That was the, uh, the gimmick that they, were, that they were going with. Wouldn't that be impressive, robbing two banks at once in the same town right across the street? Well, apparently they got these disguises. They were wearing beards, which it seems like a lot of people just had beards in general during that time. But that was, that was their, I guess, their main disguise. And they rolled into town, and uh, one of the first banks they tried to hit, one of the people working there apparently told them that their safe was on a time lock, which meant, like, it couldn't open until a certain amount of time passed. And they were telling them, oh, it's, it's going to be 45 minutes before, before the safe can open. And uh, one of them, at least one of the members of the family, had been recognized by someone in town. So, like, they knew, like, oh, man, the Daltons are here. And here they are. They're trying to pull off this big heist, robbing two banks at once. And apparently they're buying this scheme that there's a time lock on one of the safes. So they're kind of standing there, you know, killing time. And while this is happening, they have no idea. Word's getting around town. And, you know, it's the Old West. I mean, this is the real Old West. It's 1892. It's Kansas. It's the Midwest. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's got a gun back then. All the local townspeople started pulling up their arms and started rolling into town. And they just opened fire on the Dalton Gang. I mean, these people were fearless. The Dalton Gang killed you without a second thought, took your stuff, and left. They did not leave witnesses. And... These people, fearless, they rolled into town and this huge gunfight ensued because, of course, once they open fire on the Dalton Gang, the Dalton Gang's going to open fire back on them. And I think a couple townspeople died, but not too many, only like two or three. And they actually, I think, all but one member of the Dalton Gang were killed in that gunfight. So, you know, their hubris kind of came back and bit him in the ass <laughs> in that regard. And it didn't go the way that they planned. And um, four of them were killed. And I think that was kind of the uh, when the Eagles did their Desperado album. Uh, I believe they were only four members in their band at that time, even though I know for the most part they usually had five. But I want to say on their album cover, there was only four members. Well, there was Don Henley, Glenn Fry, um, God damn, the, the other ones, because I don't think there was a few members that became more synonymous with the band later on. Um, like Don Felder, I don't think he was with the band yet. I think it was, um, God, I can't remember those guys that were, that were there earlier. I should know this crap. But, yeah, so it, with the four band members, they were able to kind of pose, you know, almost similar to the four Dalton members that died. And one of the members of the family actually survived, even though he was shot over 20 times. And he was tried, and even though this guy was a Dalton member, and he'd probably killed a lot of people in the past during their crime spree, and it's the 1890s, and you think they don't really have a lot of, there's not really a lot of sympathy for, you know, cold-blooded killers. He apparently only served like 14 years in prison and was paroled and lived into the, I think he died uh, in his 60s, like in the 1930s. So he, he managed to live a pretty full life, and I mean, 
damn, if you could survive 23, I think it was 23 shots to your body, I mean, that's pretty damn, especially back then, you know, they didn't have very sophisticated medicine. Whatever doctor addressed him, he was probably barely had a high school diploma, if that. Um, but what I love so much about this story is I'm actually a direct descendant of the Dalton family, like the Dalton gang members. Um, I can't remember if it's by marriage or if it's a direct bloodline relation, but I know it's one or the other, and it's on my mom's side. More specifically, it's on my grandma, on my mom's side of the family, which is really interesting considering, you know, there's these outlaws because my great-grandfather, again, this is my grandmother on my mom's side, her father. So this guy's probably almost a direct blood relative. If not, he's only one, you know, he's like, you know, a direct relative once removed, if you can put it that way. He was the county sheriff in Harney County, which is um, one of those counties that's in Southeast Oregon. There's practically nothing out there. I mean, uh, Harney County probably had maybe a hundred people living in it when my great grandfather was a sheriff, but he, he presided over that county and he was the highest ranking law enforcement officer in that county. And yet he was so closely related to the Dalton gang who we all know what they did. And there's actually, as far as like, you know, you always want to say like, look at this iconic picture of my family. Look at this photograph. <sighs> Um, but, you know, families, they always have these things that, like, in their family, they're these, like, historical photographs. There's a photograph in Burns, Oregon. Burns, Oregon, I believe, was was or maybe still is the county seat of um, Harney County. It's, like, that one actually somewhat decent-sized town in, like, the whole southern, southeastern quarter of the state of Oregon. And so that's obviously where, that's where my grandma was born. That's where she, uh, I think for the most part, grew up. And that was, you know, where my great-grandfather, that was where he presided as sheriff. And there was a picture taken, and I really wish I could get a copy of it. I've actually tried to see if maybe it's online somewhere, because I saw it once as a little kid, and I have no idea if there's a copy bouncing around in our family. And it's a picture in the middle of, like, the main street in town. Probably in the, this is probably the 1920s or 1930s. And my grandfather is up on a horse, like, you know, his patrol through town on his horse. And he's leaning over to shake hands with the governor of the state of Oregon. So he's kind of leaning off his horse and he's taking the hand of the state governor who would obviously come to visit the town for whatever reason. I believe it was Mark Hatfield, who's actually like one of Oregon's most iconic governors. So it's kind of this heirloom and it's kind of this interesting correlation between, you know, law enforcement and then being total utter outlaws. And I remember my mom told me that as a kid, like, you ever heard of the Dalton gang? I'm like, no. Well, uh, they're an infamous outlaw gang that, you know, rivaled all these others, um, you know, realms of, you know, going crazy in the Wild West. And I'm a direct <laughs> descendant from them. I think they're maybe, well, I think like my parents' generation, my grandparents, my great grandparents, they're, they're like, you know, four or five generations before me. But um, I haven't thought about that in a long time. And just randomly tonight, I got home from work and I just thought, oh, because I was thinking, like, well, you know, what, what new vlog video ideas can I can I come up with? And then randomly, I started thinking of my family history, and of course, the Daltons are going to pop in at some time. Um, I'm not really related to. I don't really have a whole lot of famous people that I'm directly related to. At least as far as I know, you know, there's probably a lot that I'm just not aware of. I mean, other than the Dalton gang, the only other person I could think of that I have a connection to, which is also my mom's family is my mom, I think, through marriage, is cousins with Jean Smart, who is an actress. She was in Designing Women. She was in that really bad Youth and Revolt movie with Michael Sarah. She played his mom. She was in Homeward Bound. She's the person that ran the farm that the cats and dogs are at. She's the woman who steps on Sassy's tail. Um, I know probably uh, one of the things she's probably most known for is I know she was in Garden State. She was one of Zach Braff's friends' mom. She's the one that, like, um, slept with his other friend. And 
his other other friend like was pissed at him about it because um, he knew that was going on. So she's a um, really well-known character actress. But, I mean, aside from her and the Dalton gang, there's not really a whole lot of celebrity <laughs> in my family. So I just thought I'd uh, bring you the guys that little piece of history that's so awesome that the Eagles dedicated primarily the concept of their second album to it. So, I, works well for me. <laughs> anyway, guys. Till next time, a little more history your way. I am Steve the Amateur Historian, and I'll see you next time.